we're going to go to the speakers list. I'm going to ask that you please limit your comments to three minutes. If you would like to submit your comments to the board to be included in the minutes, we would welcome them. First speaker is Thomas O'Baron. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay, it works. Um, to, before I start, I just want to say to you about the um, CRISPR. It is really cool. And um, our admitted students event that we had recently uh, was a great, uh, two great events. Uh, we had a lot of great students come and people were very excited about it. I, would, I think uh, Dean Follick was his initiative and he should really get a lot of credit for that. He also set up something where people could text their questions and uh, we got a lot of good quality questions for that. So it was uh, definitely a good day, or two good days. And here are my comments. Uh, now that the Board of Trustees has decimated faculty salaries by forcing them to pay health insurance premiums, what comes next? People's lives have been so disrupted they are questioning if they can afford to continue to work at Nassau Community College. Our faculty volunteers a lot of their time to assist students, to supervise clubs, to improve the student experience. Your recent actions indicate you have no appreciation for this fact, nor does it address how these volunteer services students love and rely upon can continue in an environment of diminished morale in which faculty are forced to leave campus to work additional jobs that will compensate for the uh, board's pay reduction. It also undermines all of the work student services performed during the peak of COVID on campus. Those who made the decision to bring these employees back to the campus did so without concern for their health nor the health of those they live with. And yet the committee that forced them back to campus continued to make decisions off campus virtually for over one year because they deemed the campus unsafe for themselves. Some institutions of higher education gave their faculty financial assistance during COVID. We didn't get contact tracing. I've been with the college for over 15 years as an, admi as an admissions counselor. Since my hiring, we have gone from seven counselors to three. Over $500,000 of salaries and benefits have left the Office of Admissions, but all that has trickled down to those who remain were the work and responsibilities. The same can be said for other offices. Now we are being forced to work for less. How long will this trend continue, and for how long do you believe this is tenable? No one entered this profession to become millionaires, which is good, because they haven't. But they certainly didn't think they would need multiple jobs to support themselves, their student loans, and their families, but now they have no choice. Again, no one expected to be rich working in education, but the entire package, salary plus benefits, made NCC a viable place to work. Should we update the equation to salary minus benefits? And the recent botching of the gun scare on campus also makes people question whether or not this is a place they should be working. It is my understanding that the Board of Trustees wants the faculty to agree to a two-year contract that includes no raise in year one, 1% 1 in year two, and paying 20% of health insurance costs. This is an insult to the people who make this college a place that changes lives, empowers the community, and that people hold in high regard. It's also unsustainable. You need to address and fix this. Otherwise, you are not running the college, you are dismantling it. A financial arrangement of this nature is in an infinite debt cycle. Since the cost of health insurance will only go up if raises in income do not outpace the cost of health insurance, people will be earning less every year for as long as they continue to work here. Or am I misunderstanding something? I look forward to your response. Now, you may have heard this before because I sent it in an email, but I didn't get a response then. So how do we get answers to your questions? If we, can't, if we don't get them over email, and this is like a, a monologue, not a dialogue. I'm sorry? To whom did you send the email? Board of Trustees and then all the, the individual emails of the Board of Trustee members that I had. I I'll send you another. A any others? So no, no answers, just that question? OK. We don't, we don't uh, comment on negotiations. Not. All, not really about negotiations necessarily, but okay. Okay, thank you. Did you want to submit your comments? <laughs> Thomas, did you want to submit the comments? No, you, you have it in your email. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Allison Bremer. Good evening. A few weeks ago, I attended the Strategic Planning Committee presentation during which Dr. Kanzati described the president's role as steering the ship. The president is the leader, the one who steers the ship, you said. Over the course of my career, I have learned a lot about what makes a good leader. Good leaders know who they lead, 
respect those they lead, and work to build up those they lead. If they don't, they aren't really leaders because no one will follow and the work won't get done. As a leader in my classroom, I make it a point to learn about my students and their situations as appropriate so they know I see them as more than seat occupiers. I honor their time, tuition, and attendance, and responsive to, not dismissive of their concerns. They know I'm on their side and my goal is to lead them to their own success. I learn these practices from the good leaders who have led me. The NCC leadership style currently demonstrated to faculty and one in which our leaders do not see us as actual people or seem to care about the work we do and are more prepared to punish or dismiss us than work toward any sort of success other than successfully reminding us who holds the most power. Mr. Durso, you are a union leader who on paper at least values the union worker and fights for their fair treatment. I am utterly confused by your support, whether tacit or verbal, I don't know, of the administration and board of trustees strategy to force a contract on us rather than negotiate a contract with us. Dr. Garden, as a physician, how can you be comfortable using health insurance as a weapon? There is contract language from 40 years ago that makes your tactic legal, but ethical, professional, fair, or honorable? Absolutely not, your strategy is shameful. Dr. Kanzadi, at our last general faculty meeting, you allowed a person who was not involved in contract negotiations, not an official employee of the college, and not capable, not his fault, of providing answers to literally stand in a situation he did not deserve to be in, and which I imagine was as embarrassing and uncomfortable for him as it was for those of us watching, rather than stand and address our questions yourself. Not even a student's sincere concerns could prompt you from your seat. What kind of a leader did that student see? There was no ship steering that day. It tracked as a let them eat cake moment, showing those under your leadership that they have been dismissed. I'm asking each of you to please reflect on your style of leadership and how, is it, how it has affected the entire campus culture. The results are dismal. I want this school and every student attending to thrive, and I am up for the job. I am and will keep on working for those students. But ultimately, the campus cannot thrive until our leaders acknowledge the humanity and the value of those they lead and actually steer the ship into calmer waters. Next speaker, Suzanne Kavnik. I'm Suzanne Kiednick. I'm a professor in the English Department and Secretary of the NCCFT. I ask each of you to support a fair contract uh, and to end, immediately end the pay reduction of Clause 36.5 of our contract, which has been threatened but never before implemented in its 40-year existence. John Durso, your role as Long Island Federation of Labor President is fundamental to why you are a trustee. However, in our struggle for a fair contract, we have not heard from you. We ask you to speak up for workers wherever they are employed. Kathy Weiss, you're an independent education management professional, a former consultant of the college's outside legal firm, Ingerman Smith Attorneys. You will not be surprised to learn that a private high school in the area, the Professional Children's School, offers as a beginning salary 80000 and with that, dental insurance, health insurance, and vision benefits. In contrast, our faculty's beginning salary is 60000 and out of, out of that, the faculty must pay 15% of health insurance premiums, and now on top of that, suffer the pay cut reduction of Clause 36.5. In order that NCC can attract new, needed, talented faculty, such as for the allied health um, programs you were referring to, and retain talented faculty, please work towards a fair contract. Dr. Jorge Garden, with such low compensation, how do we expect our faculty to pay back their education loans? 
a 150,000 loan for undergraduate and graduate degrees, which I know one member has, is not surprising. Education loans are the one kind of debt for which bankruptcy is not an option. Dr. Garden, you're an internist. Please speak up for a fair wage and health insurance package that means economic stability for faculty. End the 36.5 pay reduction, which is especially unconscionable at a time of high inflation. Wanda Jackson is not here, but I would have asked her as a um, as somebody who has been a senior vice president of the National Urban League uh, to fight for economic and social injustice, racial to to and to ensure that our young as somebody who who cares that young people are enabled to lead independent and fruitful lives to fight the economic injustice here. Graduates of our nursing and allied health sciences earn more than our professors within a year of graduation. As minority students have become majority at community colleges, public funding in the community colleges has dropped off and tuition has risen. If you value education, then please work to ensure that teaching is a field that people will want and choose to enter and that NCC receives an increase from Nassau County in its operating budget. Make sure that we have the faculty needed so we, can, so we have no more canceled classes due to lack of faculty. I ask everyone to remember the impressive statistics for community college's rate of return as an investment of public money. It's about $8 for every $1 invested. Do everything possible on your watch to provide a budget that will strengthen our academic programs and ensure that NCC is strong for the next decade. Nassau Community College has had next to no operating budget increase for going on 16 years. Make it a priority to change that and increase investment in our academic programs, our faculty, and our students. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> next speaker, Mary Lannan. Hi there, I'm Mary Lannan from I'm a professor in English. Uh, last time I spoke before you, I offered you a snapshot of our students um, by describing just one class I had last semester. You'll recall, because I think it's important for us to remember our students, that my class included veterans, students who did not succeed at their four-year school, a student who worked nights to help support his family, a student who lived in a one-bedroom with his extended family, two students who suffered brain damage in their teens, and that's just a few. All of these students had dreams for success as business people, police officers, teachers, and psychologists. I talked about the energy required to serve such students well and how a pay cut is demoralizing. Today I want to talk to you about my colleagues and their dedication to the students. Uh, I work part-time in the Academic Advising Center for the past six years or so. Uh, the office atmosphere is amazing. The academic advisors are all dedicated to working the problem in a collaborative way. Uh, Amanda Fox deserves a lot of credit, so does everyone who works there. Um, I've worked in other offices before as a faculty member, I've worked as a journalist, and I never really saw such a positive work cu culture as I do there. Um, I've never seen them, like once in six years, they couldn't help a student, really, or with a workaround or some other option. Uh, they deserve respect, not a pay cut. Faculty members created the nest. They saw a need for a food pantry on campus, and they created it. Faculty members regularly contribute food to the nest. Some of them volunteer to staff it. Their level of energy, it awes me. They deserve respect, not a pay cut. They also regularly run fundraisers for our daycare center on campus, the greenhouse, to offer students scholarships and to provide the children with supplies. Other faculties, and not just the ones who have children there, regularly donate to that cause. They deserve respect, not a pay cut. This is just some of what the faculty do. In the, in the past here, I felt that both sides bargain in good faith because both sides value and respect the other. In particular, the trustees in the administration value and respect what we do and who we are. And you value the college and an energized faculty, their energy going to where it should to help students. Now I find myself regularly finding my energy going into pondering the question, how did we get here? How did we get to an unnegotiated pay cut? 
uh, I understand it was a contract, but it was negotiated in 1982 with different faculty members. It shouldn't be imposed on today's faculty. It should be negotiated with today's faculty. Why? Out of respect. And yes, there's low enrollment, there's a shortage of money, but was it planned? Take the money without negotiating with the current faculty? Mary, we reached a limit. Thank you. Okay, why wasn't it planned to ask the county for more money? Please restore respect to the faculty. Stop the unnegotiated pay cut. Let our energy go where it should, to our mission and to our students. Thank you. Thank you. Farah Simonoff. Good evening. I'm Farron Simonoff. I'm a history professor. I've been here for 25 years. I'm the president of the NCCFT. Um, what my colleagues have said is very sufficient. And I can only hope that you've all listened to what they've said, because you all know that this is a very dedicated faculty. It's a faculty that goes above and beyond. It's a faculty that's caring, that cares about its students. But it's a faculty that also has to be able to live in Nassau County and the surrounding area. And we all know it's expensive. The MIT Living Calculator has said that it's about close to $96,000 for a family of three to approach the middle class in Nassau County. Our faculty takes, I don't know, 20 years or something to reach that pay level. That means for the most of the time that they're teaching at this college and raising their families, they're really very, they're really barely middle class. They're not middle class. And now you've imposed a pay cut what, what kind of people do this? I don't understand that. I cannot believe that each one of you, and a number of you I've gotten to know during the presidential search, I just don't believe that in your hearts that you are these type of people. And we are going into mediation, as you all know. Um, we can't, we're not supposed to be doing this with a gun to our heads. This is supposed to be mediation or negotiations that are in good faith with everyone. And this union and this faculty have always acted in good faith. We work hard, we give more than the hours that we're paid for, and so I don't understand, I really don't as a human being, how you can inflict this type of financial pain on people that are working for you, for this institution. How? And Mr. Gerso, I honestly don't understand how, as the president of the Long Island Federation of Labor, how you do not speak out about this issue. And Acting President Kanzadi, as someone who's been here, as you say, for 33 years and has benefited from the faculty and the education, I don't understand how you can impose this on the faculty. I really, really don't. And so I'm asking you to please rescind this pay cut. It's extremely harmful. It is counterproductive. It is not going to bring about a contract any quicker. Aaron, we reach the limits. Okay. And so I ask you to reconsider. And if you can, go back into executive session now and rescind it. Thank you very much. Ariel Lan. Thank you, Trustee Brandy, for saying that about the honors colloquium. It was very gratifying to take part in that. Very big honor. Oh. I wish I could say it was a pleasure to be here today, but in reality, it is a duty. I have an obligation to do so. To not do so would be a bystander to destruction. As a student of this college, I look around the campus and take note of our problems, of which there are many. 
chief among them being the fact that we have now gone an entire year without a contract for our full-time professors. Let me restate that. An entire school year without a contract for the educators who make this college what it is. All of you sitting before me rely on the professors to keep this college going, and yet you throw up roadblocks to deny their contract and the security it provides? How can you sit there without shame, knowing you hurt our professors? You don't have a college without them. And what of the pay cut professors have been forced to accept to cover their health insurance? What about the pain that that will cause junior faculty who don't make enough as it is, and now you cut their paychecks even more? These individuals have student loan debt and families, and you will cha chase them away from this college by nickel and diming them. You will rob the students of amazing professors who I have definitely benefited from in a multitude of ways and the passion they bring to the table to help their students thrive. The last issue is also the most ridiculous since it was avoidable. The college hasn't had an increase in funding in 15 years. President Gonzati, you were asked by the Nassau County Legislator if we needed more funding and you said no. Our academic departments are being merged together Technologists are being reduced, and exciting new ideas for curriculum development are being denied for lack of funds. And still, you said no. The deans neglected to give me an answer on this at the faculty meeting, so I ask you again, in all humility, why? You are an alumni of this college. You know how much of a change Nassau can make in a student's life. Don't we deserve the same opportunities that you've had? Our college deserves a president that is transparent, an ally to the professors, and a solid advocate for the students, and one who is willing to shout to the rooftops the benefits of a community college education. The students are watching, and we want the five candidates that were put forth by the search committee considered. The status quo is no longer acceptable, and we demand change for the betterment of all. We're not giving up. We're not going away. We're going to keep fighting because the professors deserve it. David Stern. Good evening. I'm uh, Dr. David Stern, classroom VP for the NCCFT. I asked the board to act tonight to end the cruel faculty paycheck cut, especially now that the college and the NCCFT have mutually agreed to mediation. Many faculty have been reporting severe stress as a result. John, hello. OK. John, um, uh, Trustee Darso seems busy with other stuff. Um, many fa I think it's important that you hear this, John. Many faculty are reporting severe stress. I guess you're not as a result of the implementation of Section 36.5 paycheck cut. Unfortunately, Acting President Consati will not respond to our request to end this action. This stress is impacting our students, since faculty now need to find other sources of income, have less time to address student concerns. The situation is so bad that faculty are seeking help through services like the Nassau County Employment Employee Assistance Program, the Nassau C uh, Community College Campus Services, the SUNY Mental Health Entity, NYSIT's Peer Support Line, and yes, the NCC Nest for food support and emergency funding. funding. It's extremely embarrassing for a community college of one of the wealthiest counties in the country that it's taking actions that are forcing its faculty to use the campus's food pantry. Trustee Durso, um, I ask that you, as president of the Long Island Federation of Labor, we ask you to make a motion right now to end this practice immediately. Lack of any action tonight will be noted and reported. And what we've done is we've actually drafted up a resolution for the board. So it can be done very easily. If you need to go into executive session to discuss it, I think everybody here would be more than happy to do it. You've got John.
I just want to note that uh, I just want to note that one of the whereas is New York State law requires that the NCC Board of Trustees to discharge such other duties as may be appropriate or necessary for the effective operation of the college. Okay, and this is definitely in regard to that, and I urge you, John, can you please introduce this? I guess we're getting the same answer we got from the, the college president. Will anybody on the board introduce this resolution? It's very simple. All it says is resolve. The NASA Community College Board directs the NCC administration to end David, the paycheck cut. Up, please. Thank you. For an effective. The um, speaker is Tracy Ann Ayala. Hello, my name is Tracy Ayala, and I'm from the Finance and Economics Department. Um, congratulations, Trustee Patel, again. That's pretty high honor. Um, the Chancellor's Excellence Award. Um, We've talked a lot about 36-5. I talked about it the last time I was here, and it definitely is something that is extremely important, right? An economics and finance uh, professor, I am very worried about the fact that this is being imposed on all of us as a junior faculty member, or some junior faculty members are already paying for health care, and now this is just an additional burden. But I think the thing that really motivated me this evening was the fact that promotion and tenure wasn't on the agenda for tonight. I'm sure there's a reason, um, but... I luckily do have tenure, and when I got it, I remember the level of anxiety I had, and there was nothing like what's happening now happening. You work for years to get that, for years. So I implore you to make sure that it's on the next agenda and not to string our faculty along. 36-5, of course, is <coughs> extremely bad. I hope it goes away. Um, but promotion and tenure, this is... This is big, right? I know when, before I put in my tenure application, I was already working on my next one. Had the file, already had information in it. I updated every month. Um, I'm sure my colleagues do the same thing. This is something we work for years. Please make sure that it is something that's on the agenda for next month. Don't let them, don't let the string over the summer and just impose even more hardship on our faculty. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Virginia Sorry, I had a long walk from the back of the room. Um, I wanted to thank you all uh, for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I'm going to keep it very brief. Um, I love Nassau Community College. I am a graduate of Nassau Community College and a full-time member for about 17 years. This campus is very special to me, but I do feel that we've lost sight of what's important. So our students need us to work together. We need to work as a team, and we need to set sail on a new course together. And I know if we do that, I know that we can be successful. Morale on, morale on campus is at an all-time low, and we do need to turn it around. We need to do it together, and we need to start now. This does, once again, I know you've heard it a lot tonight, but it does bring me into 36.5. This further divides us. It, um, it's the beginning of the end unless we can change direction. Please, I say please, please reconsider reversing this decision to impose this pass along on the faculty, the heart of this institution. So the faculty are the heart of the institution, and we need your support. This pass along has truly hurt good, hardworking people and their families. We need to right the wrongs, we need to work together, and we need to try to foster an environment where we're all valued. We're here for the same reason. We want to ensure that our students are successful, and most importantly, because we love Nassau Community College. And I'm hopeful that change is on the horizon, and I once again thank you for your time. Thank you. The next meeting of the Board of Trustees is scheduled for Tuesday, May 9, 2023. Committee meetings begin at 5 o'clock, followed by the opening of the public session. I request a motion to adjourn the meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? White second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Motion carries 7 0. Meeting adjourned at 8 15.